Yeah. Yeah. I'm just recording. So do you want to tell me what did you think of the Aaron Bastani Grace Blakely interview? Well, I found it interesting. Um, their their views, I think, are diverging. Um, but what I um, I'm, I'm going to refer back to is is the interview she did with Douglas Carswell. D- Douglas Carswell was the first UKIP MP. He defected from the Conservative Party to UKIP, uh, and he was the MP. People Clacton, I think, um, and he interviewed her about, about her last book. I think it was. Carswell did. Okay. Yes, and, and it's a really good interview, um, and I suspect probably because Carswell's a monetary reformer, he, he interviewed the first monetary reform uh, private members bill into Parliament back in about two thousand and eleven. That was uh, later on. Uh, uh, there was one introduced by oh the MP for um, High Wycombe Baker Steve Baker. Now uh, monetary reform. Okay, the interesting thing about monetary reform is there is a um, an aspect of it to do with Austrian economics, and the Austrian economics. Okay, is I think something that Carswell signs up to. There's another thing called Boom Finance. Guy, the guy that does that wrote a book called The Jigsaw. Well, he identifies as a as an Austrian economic economic uh, economics person, and their view of money is interesting. Now, the reason I tell you that is on the plane coming over from Sweden, I started rereading Zarlenga's The uh, Lost Science of Money. Now, uh, that's interesting because it talks about von Mises and his theory of money uh, is just a theory uh, and doesn't refer to empirical evidence going back. Now, uh, many Austrians are actually gold bugs. I think Mises is included in that. (coughs) That means they want a metallic based gold standard. Um, Some of them realise the importance of bimetallism which is gold and silver uh, others don't now right the why, 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 why i said all of that is that grace in her talk with aaron was really focusing really on trying to defend her view of what socialism was and aaron was talking about um defending his view basically of communism Um, socialists and communists don't necessarily get on. I'm just reading the Wikipedia um, article about uh, scientific socialism, um, homage to Catalonia by Orwell, and also Orwell's The Road to Wigan Pier. Now, that's quite a good broad section of different people analysing. So Grace uses the terminology social uh, relations. She's a Marxist, Marxist. I pointed out she should maybe read some Bakunin. That's my view. Um, uh, Because there are different flavours of revolutionary Marxists. She mentions Gramsci in her uh, discussion with uh, Bastani. But for instance, she doesn't mention Safra. And Safra uh, was actually a contemporary of Gramsci's, or or, what his father was. Um, uh, 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 and Strafra fled Mussolini, basically, uh, um, and took up a professorship in Cambridge. But Strafra uh, does actually the best job of dismantling classical economics, in, um, whereas Grace is hooked up on the Hayek, Hayek neoliberal uh versus say Keynes, Keynesianism thing but it's um but it's not it's it's not a two-pole argument that there's almost a a fire break in a ring around what money is and and how money is a fundamental it's a cause so I sent a note to you sort of saying there's not about causes in what Grace is saying here so Aristotle for instance um talked about uh, the four causes 
Um, but what uh, in in ethics, um, Aristotle does talk about money and says that money is basically uh, it's a creature of laws. Yeah, um, and that's a really important point. Um, and Zarlenga gives a historical timeline of money. Now, the other thing Grace, from what she was saying to Aaron Bastani, clearly hadn't looked at or revisited lately was David Gra Graeber's debt the first 5,000 years. All right. Now, David's an anthropologist. OK. Uh, um, Zarlenga is a new numesticist, which is basically someone who studies the history of money. Now, economists, strangely enough, don't they, they have a mythology of money they say it's replaced barter and barter's no good and end of story that's uh, and we don't need to bother about it it's all these other th things that that, that that make the difference uh and then take that into one another little group over here and then the one thing none of them talk about is usury <coughs> so um so what did I think about Grace's um, talk with Bastani uh, and his interview? He, he was saying, oh, I like the um, anecdotal stuff, right? Uh, now, I, it's not anecdotal stuff. It's talking about historical facts, not stuff in her own life, as far as I know, right? I, I, I'm... I, Bastani just keeps going down in my estimation. You know, I don't know. I, I don't know what's happened. But, but you said you said you said there was something where they differ, where they're beginning to differ. So what was that bit? Um, well, he says to her, well, I agree with about 20 percent of what you say. Right. Uh, oh, no, 80 percent rather. But he took issue on things like she wants a, a non hierarchical workers democracy type idea right i'm not sure how widely she's read on the subject for instance i'm not sure she's read ricardo semler's uh book maverick which is very good um which does talk about a form of industrial democracy uh, whether it's the sort that she has in mind uh, whether she falls into the categorization that orwell has in the road to wigan pier um of uh you know, uh, canonizing work, mach machine um, worship. Uh, you know, there are a number of them. Um, but Semler was an industrialist and had a flat organizational structure and a form of industrial democracy. Um, now, You sort of say what, what specifically did did Bastani, Bastani differ with her on? Um, I I can't give you any off the top of my head because simply for the fact I didn't find much of what he said interesting and it's not worth okay. remembering. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, sure, sure. With, with Grace, it's a different kettle of fish altogether. Um, it's interesting what she's saying, but it's interesting more for what she left out than what she puts in. Now. I don't think it's left out on purpose. I, I think she just hasn't read widely enough yet. Um, so when Wittgenstein says about um, uh, his book, uh, oh, whichever one it was, he says it's the, it, it, the the book consists of two part: what I have written and what I haven't written. And um, what he hasn't written, he hasn't written on purpose. Whereas most of us don't not write unless we're self-centering of course so what it is is that they're engaging in a a debate within the allowed oh it's not even an overton window it's it, it it's much more ingrained than that it, it's the mark chomsky point about you you wouldn't be where you are saying what you are unless you're you know of the right stuff to be put in that camp right and what neither of them are addressing is the fundamental thing about money um and there's a philosopher called david lewis who published a famous paper amongst philosophers analytic philosophers at that on uh, convention 
And one of the conventions he analyzes is actually money. Zarlenga obviously goes a hell of a lot deeper. Um, and show the religious significance of uh, offerings to the temple at Delphi, um, i.e. getting rid of gold in foundations and stuff to keep it in short supply. H how um, fiat monies have existed almost from the get-go, but they just don't go there. Now, um, Bernard Leite famously says he, he, he had a um, discussion, they were both at MIT together, uh, and he says to, uh, oh, I, I always get them mixed up. Um, one of the famous American left, supposed left wing Democrat type um, economists. Krugman. Krugman. Pardon? Paul Krugman. You're going to have to speak up. I can't hear you. Paul Krugman. Paul Krugman. 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 Yes, Krugman. And he says to Krugman, or Krugman says to him, don't you know um, that you can't you can't mention the money system? If you mention the money system, it's career death. Right. So that's what Bernard Leite says. And Bernard Leite, who who is an amazing, was an amazing person. No one ever mentions him. So he designed the EQ, the, 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 the European Currency Unit. Great mentions. Um, Chile, for instance, and Allende's uh, things, which, which were actually brought in by a guy called Stafford Beer, who, who built the computer that did all of that stuff be before. Oh, she mentioned Stafford Beer. Okay. okay. She doesn't mention Stafford Beer. That's uh, what okay. I'm saying. Uh, okay. Right. Because there's, um, I saw... Think, I saw no one thought. ever mentions about Chile. It still has the fermento de um, escudo or whatever, which is basically a monetary unit index which even property taxation is based on and it, it really works and that was introduced by Allende as well and no one has seen fit to get rid of it I, I think the central bank probably would try to but but I think it's very popular uh, but the EQ as a trading currency, having two types of currency is something that comes up in Zarlenga talking about uh, the fall of the Roman Republic and, and how, um, you know, you'd have a money for domestic trade, a money for international trade. It's a really important point. It sounds like really sort of turgid and technical, um, but but it, I mean, it goes to the heart of things saying, um, it, 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 in uh, the Jewish law, um, the idea of not charging interest to your brothers, but charging it to it um, to to, to, to uh, other people, Gentiles, OK, yeah. is yeah. more of an international trade thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, Roger, rather... Roger, I, I'm going to have to roll off. Roll off. I'm back. I've, I've got a break at 1130, but I think maybe you're going to be you're going to be busy then and you're probably going to be whacked tonight. So I'm around tomorrow, though, and Thursday. Yeah, well, look, I, I mean, I I did a blog. Um, I read your latest blog, OK, and then I did a long thing and then I did a blog afterwards. You talk about the centrists and, and what yeah. have you. And it is um, it, it is all sort of logic um, connected to all of this stuff. Um, what there really is in the discourse, I have to say this, is a complete lack of logic or appreciation of first, second and third order logics. Right. Okay. So people talk about science. Okay. There's, there's an absence of logic in science at the moment. There's yeah. an absence of logic in politics. Pe people are floating around in the air without grounding their their principles, grounding what they mean. Yeah. And, yeah. and in a way that makes it more entertaining because they misunderstand each other constantly um so I, I did a blog some years ago i haven't linked to it in this room i've got to go i've got to go let's oh, all right mate no let's worries tomorrow. tomorrow yeah cool let's do that cheers around jay hey, see you in a bit have a good day bye, bye. 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 bye.